Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. In the last video, I built this tiny monosynth using the Pico ADK and a programming language named Vault DSP. And there was a lot of feedback and questions, and one of the most common was, is it also possible to create a polyphonic synthesizer with this? Luckily, the answer is yes. Today, let's find out how to do this together. And full disclaimer, I'm not an expert at Vault DSP. I've learned the basics of this language two weeks ago. So at least we're starting on the common ground here. So let's do this. So after the last video, I got a lot of feedback and questions. And the most frequently asked questions were, what is Vault? And why would you rather use this for synth development than other languages like Mozzi, Fast, or Ixian Pure Data? I'll try to answer these questions in this video. Vault DSP was developed by Dr. Leonardo Laguna Ruiz some years ago with the goal of speeding up audio application development by creating a domain-specific language which means a language assigned to a very specific task. You should definitely check out his homepage where he has a number of plugins and actual hardware based on Vault on offer. He's working on a new release of the Vault compiler at the moment, so definitely keep an eye on that. Let's start by a short recap how to install the Vault software development kit on your computer if you missed that in my last video. I'm going to use my Raspberry Pi 400 for coding and compiling. Like in my last video, first install the Pico development kit as we're going to use the Pico ADK board to create an actual hardware synth today. Do this by entering the shell commands shown on screen right now. Then install the Pico ADK development template like this. Now, among other things, you should find a copy of Visual Studio Code in your start menu. Launch this and then click the Plugin tab. Search for the Vault extension and install it. Also install the Code Runner plugin and now we're good to go. There are two important files here, the main C++ and the dsp.vault file. All audio processing is handled by the Vault script, while the C program acts as some kind of messenger which reads hardware inputs, transfers it to a Vault application, and receives audio output which is then transferred to the hardware audio output. The Vault script will be converted to one of several target languages by the Vault compiler, among them C++ and JavaScript. And there you already have a compelling reason for using Vault. Once coded, your creation can run natively on a multitude of systems from barebones hardware like the Pico ADK to web browser. And talking about web browsers, on the Vault DSP homepage, you can find a prototyping tool, which is a fairly convenient way to quickly develop and test Vault code. So let's go there and begin with a simple example. Click on the folder icon and choose a language. The first thing you should know about Vault is that it's a statically typed language. This simply means you must define the type of every variable you declare in your code. There are real and integer numbers and strings, and if you need to treat an integer as a real number, for example, you need to cast it. Vault operates with functions as seen in other languages. You can define functions with the keyword fun. Functions can receive and return multiple parameters. Functions can also share context, which means the variables they work with, with the AND keyword. You can see this in our template here, which contains several functions that are introduced with AND. As you can see here, we have a number of default functions here. Let's walk through these. The process function is the script's main loop. It will run as long as the app is running. Note on and note off will react to your MIDI keyboard. Control change will listen to incoming MIDI control changes. Default is run upon startup and can be used for setting default values for the variables in your app. Enough lead-in, let's begin with a simple monophonic synth. If you press play, you'll hear a sine wave. That's because the input variable in the process function contains a sine wave. And first, I'll declare a pitch variable and set its default value to 32, which corresponds to a G sharp 1 in the MIDI note number table. And now I need an oscillator that can change its pitch according to my keyboard playing. Here are two functions that will output a saw wave. I'll explain them later. First, let's take a look at the mem keyword here. Defining a variable as mem will make it persistent. You can think of this as a global variable that will keep its assigned value a bit like pointers in C. For example, 
let's use our pitch variable in the process function and return the result of our mysterious calculations above. We also need to set the pitch when pressing and releasing keys, so let's add some lines to the note of and note on functions. We now have a function that sets a pitch value when pressing a key on the keyboard and a main loop that does some clever calculations with that pitch value. Note that I was very lazy here and just set the pitch to a frequency you can't hear when a note of command is received, giving us the illusion of silence. Now let's try this. Now let's take a look at those two math functions. I've rewritten them in JavaScript here for you. When you run this and plot the results into a graph, this is the result. So the pitch to rate function is balanced out to create a graph that returns the correct value for a saw wave oscillator at a sample rate of 44.1 kHz. That value then gets added up into the phase value forever and ever, but the modular function keeps it at a value between 0 and 1. I guess you could find an easier to understand way to achieve the same result, but I gotta hand it over to Leonardo. This is elegant and clever. You can find more examples for oscillators on VaultDSP's GitHub page. Basically, all the building blocks for a simple synth are there from envelopes over LFOs to oscillators to effects. Uh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want to see more DIY projects on this channel in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel. Seeing those subscriber numbers grow makes me happy and keeps me motivated to push out new content. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can become a channel member using the button under this video, or join my Patreon. Link is in this video's description. Thank you very much. For example, let's go ahead and add a simple amp envelope to our oscillator. On the GitHub page, go to the examples folder, then to the end folder, and let's get the attack decay example. Just copy that do function to our script and rename it to envelope so it's easier to understand later. The vault compiler will now complain about the missing util.edge function, so open up the util folder on the GitHub page once again and copy the edge function to your script, and then remove the word util from your function. And now, how do we actually use that envelope in a synth? Well, remember that process function, which is an endless loop that returns a value for each sample in a 44.1 kHz audio stream? We multiply that value with a value between 0 and 1, and that will change the volume of that sample. And as you can see, the do function, which creates an envelope, also needs a gate parameter, and if that gate is 1, then it will start calculating, and if gate is 0, then it will stop. So first, let's introduce two persistent variables, volume and gate, and then define the volume as the result of the envelope function. The envelope function takes three parameters, gate, attack, and decay. Attack and decay are real numbers between 0 and 1, so let's add some static values here first. For example, 0.001 for a fast attack and 0.5 for soft decay. Now multiply the volume with a phase, like this. And last but not least, we need the gate to turn on and off to trigger the envelope. So let's add gate equals 1.0 to the note on function and gate equals 0 to the note off function. And now we've made ourselves a cheap 80s toy piano. But would your synth be a good synth without some knobs to fiddle around with? So let's set up two controllers to modify attack and decay when turned. So instead of using fixed values for attack and decay in the process function, let's define two variables, attack and decay. And now initialize them in the default function down here. Now all you need to do is to go to the controller change function and add some lines of code that will change those two values when an encoder is turned. As you can see, the control change function receives the controller number and its value from your hardware. As MIDI values range between 0 and 127, 
you'll need to divide the control value by 127. Also, don't forget to cast the integer value of the control change to a real number. As our attack and decay values are global variables or pointers, the process function will pick them up live without any need to return them somewhere. As you can see down here, this web page has some virtual controllers and we use controllers 30 and 31 for this example. And this is how it sounds. Okay, so for the last example, let's go polyphonic. For now, our synth can play only one note after the other, but what if we want to play chords? Well, to actually hear more than one wave on the output, you can simply start adding up multiple waves. So the solution here is to go through all of the calculations we made in the last example multiple times within one iteration of the process loop, while distinguishing between the virtual oscillators we're currently working on. And after that is done, just add up all the phases and return them to your hardware. Now code can get really messy quickly if you try to keep track of multiple oscillators so this time around we'll define an array of oscillators. An array is a simple collection of variables of the same type. I'll make a four voice polyphonic synth here, so we need to keep track of four pitches and four oscillators. So instead of one pitch, we'll have an array of four pitches. And we'll also need a counter which points at the oscillator we're currently working on. And then we need an array for the phases we're calculating. Now we can build a loop to go through all the oscillators we have and calculate the phase and the pitch for each of them. For this to work, we also need to modify the phase this function, so it reserves four memory slots instead of only one to calculate all the phases in. Otherwise, our sound output will be pretty interesting. Last but not least, we need to keep track of the notes currently playing. So each key press will move a pointer up and once we reach the maximum number of notes, we'll start again at zero. When releasing a key, we will quickly scan all the notes played at the moment and set the matching note to a pitch of zero. And now we can add up all the phases within this loop. This division here will divide each phase by the number of notes currently played in other words, reducing the overall volume of each oscillator by the amount of active oscillators, so the overall volume does not exceed the maximum, otherwise we'll get some clipping. And that's it. The main challenge here is to keep track of all your MAM variables that need to be turned into arrays. I did this here in this example and added a low pass filter for all the oscillators. The cutoff frequency can be adjusted with a MIDI control. Returning to the start of this video, we can now just copy and paste all the code into our Visual Studio project and compile it. And this will create a .uf2 file. Now you can connect your Pico ADK to your computer, press the two small buttons simultaneously and then copy the UF2 file to the USB drive that now appears on your desktop. The Pico ADK will now run your code without the overhead of an operating system relatively close to the hardware. And congratulations, you've just created your first virtual analog hardware synthesizer. Short update, after cutting this video I found out that using this exponential function to generate a saw wave doesn't work on hardware for some reasons made it crash, so I replaced it with a saw wave function from the utility library of Vault DSP. The code is in this video's description. And thanks for watching this episode to the end. Making this video was a lot of work and I want to say thank you to Leonardo and Sylvester for answering all my questions while working on this. As you perhaps noticed, uh, the documentation on this language isn't quite up to date, so I hope this video helps a bit. And now I have some homework for you. With the information given, you should be able to create a polyphonic synth with controllable amp and filter envelopes that also reacts to velocity. Alternatively, you can create a drum computer that can output a bass drum, a snare drum and hi-hat using some wave generators found in the utility libraries. And this drum computer would then react to the keys on the keyboard, uh, so if you're playing a low C, it's playing a bass drum and so on.
Remember, the Vault DSP GitHub repository contains all the building blocks you need to pull this off. If you manage to complete this homework and send it in, I will send you my Lemon 3 synth with a very nice touch screen but without the Raspberry Pi. Should I receive more than one working solution, however, the second winner will get a Pico ADK plus prototype boards and the third and fourth and fifth entries will get the Lemon 3 PCB and I will also host a short live stream showing Showing off your work and announcing the winners. And thanks to Sylvester for making this possible. Yeah, and that's it for today. A short introduction to the Vault DSP programming language. I hope you found this interesting and useful. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.